Mr. Williams, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please, sir? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you all please remain standing? Have a moment of silence for our friend, Mark Fisher, who suddenly passed away yesterday. We just ask that uh, our prayers are for his family and the children he left. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mr. Everly, can we get that clock moved back so we're not four minutes late? <laughs> I'm going to have to work on that. Okay. All right. Give me a week. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the public business meeting of the Allegheny County Commissioners on Thursday, July 24th. 2014 at 5 o'clock. Commissioners, are there any additions or deletions to our agenda? No, no sir. sir. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our July 10th, 2014 public business meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're going to move right into citations. It's a big night for us today. Item number one, commissioners, is the 2014 National History Day Contest Gold Medalists. And uh, we have a couple young people that are here to uh, uh, receive um, a couple citations. Uh, we have Dimitri Sendo, Ethan Grice, and Kay Sheehy, um, all from Allegheny County, uh, Allegheny High School. Um, for instructional leader social studies. So, and you are? I'm Kay Oh, okay, wonderful. <laughs> so, good evening, Commissioner McKay, Commissioner evening. Brody, and Commissioner Valentine, and the constituents of Allegheny County. Um, I am Kay Sheehy, and I am the instructional leader, one of the instructional leaders, okay. and the social studies teacher and department chair at Allegheny High School. And it is with great honor that I stand here today to introduce two of my former students and two of our outstanding students, one who just graduated from Allegheny, uh, Dimitri Sendo just graduated, and incoming senior Ethan Greist. And they'll tell you a little bit about themselves personally in just a moment. Um, but what I wanted to share with you today is a little bit about the National History Day program. Um, these young men won at not only our school level, but then at the state level, were finalists and then won the National History Day program, as you mentioned a few seconds ago, for their documentary. There are different levels, and they also won a very prestigious award we'll tell you about here in a second. Um, National History Day has been around for quite some time, and they'll tell you a little bit about that as well, and we have been involved with that in Allegheny County Public Schools for quite some time as well. Um, students choose historical topics related to a theme, and then they conduct extensive primary and secondary research. They have all sorts of avenues to explore um, their poster categories, and again, they um, excelled in the documentary category. They have a history of working on this project for years um, on their own, and they teamed up this year for the first time. The program culminates, and it is at, in Maryland at the University of Maryland, and that's where the national competition comes. The National History Day program promotes that it helps students develop critical thinking and problem solving skills, research and reading skills, oral and written communication and presentation skills, self-esteem and confidence, and a sense of responsibility. And more than half a million students encouraged by teachers across our country uh, participate every single year. The name of their documentary this year is entitled Nuremberg, The Modern Foundation of Human Rights. And it's actually available on YouTube with that title if anyone would like to watch it after they leave this evening. With the award that they won, one of the sponsors actually sponsors a particular category, and that was their category. And so they also won $5,000 from the History Channel for winning um, this category. Um, 
as I said to you from Allegheny High School, we are just so proud of them. And I'd like to publicly thank Mrs. Kim Sloan, who is one of the teachers in my department. She worked tirelessly with these young men and with the project. It just so happens her husband had surgery today, or she would be here this evening. And I would like to, of course, recognize our principal, Mr. Calhoun, and the social studies supervisor, Mr. Logsdon, um, for all of the support that we have for this program. Obviously, their family should be congratulated. And the excitement extends beyond the people that I have just briefly mentioned. So I would like to personally congratulate and introduce you to recent graduate Dimitri Sendo and then incoming senior Ethan Greist and our National History Day winners from Allegheny County. Hello, my name is Dimitri Sendo. I'm a recent graduate from Allegheny High School, where I was the class president involved in the uh, tennis team. I will be attending University of Maryland next year, uh, majoring in chemistry. And I've been involved with History Day for seven years now. This was my seventh year. I started in the sixth grade. It was a uh, required project. Uh, all students were required to do it. And then again in seventh grade. In the eighth grade, it wasn't required, but uh, I still wanted to do it. And a couple of my friends still wanted to participate. and we did it again. Uh, and then again in high school, it was required my freshman year, but then the sophomore, junior, and senior year, it wasn't. I still wanted to. I enjoy the uh, competition and making the documentaries. Uh, my sophomore year uh, with my team, we uh, won first place in the state for a documentary on the Iranian Revolution. Uh, we did not place at the national level that year, but uh, this year uh, I teamed up with Ethan Grice, who's also been doing National History Day for the past seven years. Uh, he's always been in the individual um, category. And uh, we had the idea to team up and see you know, what we could do together, since we've both been involved in the program but never have actually worked together. So this year's theme was rights and responsibility. <coughs> and we wanted to pick a topic that um, hadn't been explored as much as we had liked. We want to not only create a documentary that looks good, but we also want to educate and learn something for ourselves possibly put a new perspective on whatever topic we chose to explore. And that was the Nuremberg Trials. We wanted to see what kind of effect it had, what, it, uh, goal, what its goals were, and if it had actually achieved those goals in a world today that still has many human rights violations. Um, and this is my partner, Ethan Grace. <laughs> few minor remarks here. I had to make sure I wrote some out so I didn't get too off track. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm Ethan Greist. I am a rising senior at Allegheny High School. Um, in Allegheny, I participate in several different programs and clubs, including varsity mock trial, um, the student government I'm very involved in, the band, the future business leaders of America, and the, uh, there was a fifth one, but I forgot. Anyways. <laughs> uh, outside of school, I participate in a lot of other leadership activities. I've been a Hobby ambassador. I've been a Rotary Club ambassador. I've been to several uh, summer camps and ex most recently the Appalachian Regional Commission. Um, let's see, what's the full name of it? Oak Ridge National Laboratory. I went there to study math and science, which is a departure from my usual studies in social studies and uh, literature. And I'm also a church acolyte and an Eagle Scout. Um, I've been participating in National History Day ever since the sixth grade now. Dimitri touched on that a little bit as far as our history with National History Day goes. I've advanced to states for the past five years running now, and I hope to advance next year if I am not swamped by college work <laughs> or applying for college work, as you all know, is a very extensive process. Um, each year for History Day, students put forward these projects on a given theme, and uh, our theme Dimitri talked about a little bit, was the rights and responsibilities in history. And we decided that human rights was a very important issue to us, and we wanted to expound upon that a little bit. But we've already talked about national history a lot. I wanted to make it relevant to you guys as how it's helped me and how it can help other students in these sort of programs. So there were three things, three major points I had as far as how it helped me and how it can be used to help other students as an instructional tool. The first thing it taught me, uh, National History Day, was it obviously gave me a vaster historical knowledge than I would have had 
had I not participated in the competition. And that's very valuable in and of itself as far as it helped my, uh, helped me in my history class, but it also gave me a, a little of learning that I hadn't had so much before. Before National History Day, I will admit I was a lot more interested in science and technology because I had the belief, like a lot of kids do, that History Day is just sort of a boring old subject of what people did hundreds of years ago, and you just read a history book, uh, get a couple of facts, and spit it back out on a test, and that's all history is. But with National History Day, you have to not only take that knowledge and that research, but you also have to put it into a project that doesn't only educate people about the subject, which we wanted to do, but also makes them enjoy it, makes them like it, makes them want to know more about it. And when you're immersed in something like that in the history, it made me interested in that. So that's the first thing that it did for me, is, is it helped me out with my learning process. The second thing it did was the valuable skill that I know I'll use for college is the research skills. And that's research is very extensive with the National History Day. You have to take all these different sources and then you have to boil them down and disseminate them into the facts that matter, the facts that you can use for your project. And not just the things people want to hear, but the things that you know, need to hear, need to be in your project, and what's relevant and what's really, what's really important across all the sources you use. And that kind of citation, that information, that skill will become very valuable every time I write a paper or do anything else in college. And I know that's a skill that everyone should have as far as in their learning experiences and something I want to pass on. And the third thing is a little bit more esoteric that History Day taught me, but it's something that I think is the most important thing about it. And that is the, um, it gave me this ability to sort of make connections between these historical facts, and not just with history, but with other subjects as well, where you think there's just a bunch of facts that are disconnected in history that you don't really think, you know, something happened a thousand years ago, how does that affect me? How does that make any difference? But things have these relationships. No fact, no person is truly isolated, even if it's thousand years ago in history. And I realized that going through this competition and going through this process of making these projects, that these things are relative and you have to see the bigger picture and the relationships between these facts and ideas. And I believe that that can be applied not just to history, but to science, to literature, and to other fields as well. And I would argue that it can be used in personal relationships too, and also the greater societal and cultural relationships as far as you know, politics or business goes, or the things that you guys are here tonight about. That if we can understand the bigger picture better, see the deeper meaning of things better, and understand the relationships that make things relevant, not just to their own individual selves, but across all boards, we can sort of understand each other better. And I think that's a very powerful, important thing. And there's nothing else that I can pass on about History Day. You know, if no one else ever does History Day again, which uh, I would find appalling, but I hope everyone does History Day, it was a great experience. But if I couldn't pass on the historical knowledge that I've gained, if I couldn't pass on that skill of you know, using citations, I would want to pass on that ability to see in the deeper realm of things and to understand those connections and see the bigger picture, because I think that's something that everyone can benefit from. And I think it's a very powerful thing, and it's something that I wish to pass on in all of my endeavors. And had it not been for History Day, that wouldn't be something I would be talking about tonight. It wouldn't be something that I would have. So I think History Day is very important in that aspect. Um, I know I've used up a lot of your time, but I want to thank you for it. Um, I want to thank you for your support, and uh, thank my teachers especially, Mrs. Sheehy, Mrs. Sloan, um, the people who helped with the History Day competition, and your support of education in Allegheny County, because it is very important, I think, and I want to thank you for it. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. You two are definitely two shining stars in Allegheny County, so you take all the time you want. Thanks. It's worth it. Uh, gentlemen, would you join us up here for these uh, citations? Ms. Sheehy, would you please? Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Allegheny County government. 
Be here known to all, this official citation is awarded to Dimitri Sendo and Ethan Grice, the 2014 National History Day Contest Gold Medalists. Whereas Allegheny County Government wishes to publicly recognize Dimitri Sendo and Ethan Grice for their gold medal first place win in the 2014 National History Day Contest, a prestigious competitive academic event, and whereas Mr. Sendo and Mr. Grice exhibited multifaceted intellectual and artistic talent demonstrating determination and tendency during their six years of participation and this year were awarded not only the state but also the national championship for their group documentary uh, Neumenberg, the, the modern foundation of human rights addressing this year's contest themes rights and responsibilities in history and whereas Mr. Sindo and Grice are exemplary representatives of Allegheny County and are responsible for Allegheny County receive, receiving positive recognition in the United States of America as well as the state of Maryland for their ex exceptional academic achievement. There, now we four, as the County Commissioners of Allegheny County, Maryland, take this special occasion to extend our sincere congratulations and best wishes to these young men and highly commend them for the outstanding accomplishments. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands to be caused the great seal of Allegheny County, Maryland to be affixed this 24th day of July in the year 2014, signed by all three county commissioners. Congratulations, gentlemen. Congratulations. And I think it's most uh, important that we give the teachers and the uh, academic support that helped these young men. So thank you very much to both teachers. Absolutely, thank you. Very Going to juggle some things around here. Um, we have three students that are doing a community service project and they would like to address the county commissioners. So I'm going to jump down to constituents and pick number eight, nine, and ten and invite these three to come up and then we'll resume our agenda from there. So uh, Allison Crow, Melissa McGrath, and Grace Hutterson. Close enough. Good evening. Uh, my name is Melissa McGrath, and we're from Girl Scout Troop 4075. We're a local Girl Scout troop. We meet at Grace Baptist Church. Hi, my name's Allison Crow. And I'm Grace Hutcherson. The Silver Award is why we're here. It's the second highest Girl Scout award you can receive, and it's the highest one a cadet can receive. The Silver Award is a project that you work on. It has two to four girls, and we get help from the community, and it's to help the community. So for our Silver Award project, we wanted to put a bench on the Allegheny Highlands Trail, and we wanted to thank you guys for your cooperation, and especially to Dave Eberly and to Chief Bobby Dick for helping us out with the project. Um, we plan to put it at the Homesteader Curve, um, which is near our trailhead, and we thought that it would be a great location for the bench and helpful for our community. We got all the requirements. We're getting a bench from the Lions Club, and we have Lowe's to cement it in. And if, there, if um, we need any other options, we have um, other options. And we'll make sure to meet all the requirements of the county, and we just wanted to especially thank you for your cooperation and helping us with that. Wonderful. Well, thank you, ladies. Wonderful, great project. Anything else to add? Well, when we see the, the youth of today showing that type of leadership and those five uh, students right there, I think we could just close the meeting and go out on a high note. So thank you, ladies. Appreciate that. 
All right. Commissioners, I'm gonna move back into our action agenda. Item number two is resolution 14-17. Ms. Sierra Wigfield is here. She is our transportation planner. And what do you have for us today? All right. Um, well, the first thing, good evening. Good evening. Um, the first thing is the transportation improvement program for fiscal year 2014 through 2019. Um, it's a list of the capital projects that are gonna be um, implemented for this period and it's updated annually and amended as needed. Um, this year there are 10 state highway projects, there are two Allegheny County projects, two from the city of Cumberland and one from the city of Frostburg um, and federal, legis federal legislation requires the MPO which are you guys um, and the, with the cooperation of MDOT um, develop the plan and uh, approve it in order to be eligible for funding. So I'm requesting that you sign my resolution, please. <laughs> okay, commissioners, do you have any questions or comments for Ms. Wickfield? No. No, okay, I'd like to entertain a motion that we uh, uh, have the Allegheny County commissioners acting as the Cumberland Area Metropolitan Planning Organization approve the fiscal year 2014-2019 transportation improvement program. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Stay right there. Item number three is yours as well. Yes. Um, this is a, um, a 2015 Cumberland Urbanized Area Unified Planning Work Pro Program project. Uh, the City of Cumberland requested that we take a plan to look at, uh, take a look at Green Street and create a complete street plan. So I was put, I have put together an RFP and I'd like to procure a consultant. Um, but tonight I'm just ask, asking to advertise my RFP. Hopefully I can put it out on Monday, if, if pending your approval. Okay. Any comments or concerns, commissioners? None, sir. Definitely needs to be done. Well, I was just going to say the, the street plan doesn't include alligator. Ruts, no, does it? Uh, hopefully improving that. I mean, kind of like smooth would be nice. Yes, it would. <laughs> yeah. So maybe drainage. Oh yeah, and some benches or for something. For the alligators. Yeah. Yeah, for the alligators. <clears throat> so, anyhow, okay, gentlemen, uh, I'd like to move that uh, we, as the county commissioners, approve to advertise the request uh, of proposal for. Um, the Cumberland Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Wonderful. Good evening. Thank you. Mr. Dorsey. Item number four, the 2014 Allegheny County Comprehensive Plan. Good afternoon. Uh, as you know, the county's current comprehensive plan was uh, adopted in 2002. Two years ago, the Planning and Zoning Commission authorized staff to begin a new comprehensive plan, and with the staff of SNS Planning and Design seated right here, uh, we have um, basically finished that task. And uh, the Planning and Zoning held public hearings on uh, April 9th and May 21st. It culminated with uh, a decision to uh, approve the plan and forward it to the county commissioners with a recommendation for adoption. Your hearing was on July 10th. And I request that you make a decision on that plan. Okay. Um, I'd like to give the mic up to Mr. Bill Atkinson, um, who has requested to have a comment about this topic. Yes. Bill, if you would give your name and address for the record, please. Yes. Bill Atkinson. Height, weight, <laughs> fingerprints. You have all that. Yeah, we do. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no need, Bobby. Chief Dick. Anyhow, go ahead. Bill Atkinson, 10117 Gulf Creek Drive, Cumberland. Uh, here representing the Maryland Department of Planning. And again, just want to make sure that the comments that we have made uh, in an April 8th letter, and then subsequently we sent a July 8th letter also, again restating that we feel that the inclusion of the Terrapin Run is inconsistent with your other parts of your plan. I won't go into the details, 
you've all read the letters. There was one additional comment made in the, in the July 8th letter, and it just simply is, is stating that MDP does have the right to fulfill its statutory requirement and role to review and update and comment on plans, and that nothing in the uh, Second Amendment stipulation and agreement of the circuit court order prohibits us from making those comments. Um, so that was the only real addition to that. But again, just wanted to make sure in the record that we're on record again is stating our reasons for that. And again, you have our letter right. stating that. We do, and we appreciate that, okay. Bill. Thank right. you very Thank much. You. Yes, sir. Commissioners, any thoughts, concerns, comments uh, for Mr. Dorsey before we proceed? No? None, sir. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the 2014 Allegheny County Comprehensive Plan. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner McKay, uh, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number five. Uh, Mr. DeWitt. All right, gentlemen, this is the Department of Natural Resources Capital Improvement. Grant request for proposal for the Frostburg Stormwater Retrofit Grant Agreement uh, execution. Mr. DeWitt, how are you, sir? Well, how are you? Good evening. I uh, have some exciting news for you guys about a grant funded project that will help Allegheny County continue to accomplish our goals for the Chesapeake Bay Phase Two Watershed Implementation Plan uh, that we've been working on, as you know, for a very long time. Um, in January of this year, I requested permission to submit our proposal package under DNR's capital improvement grant request for proposals. Um, our two-part proposal was funded in part. Uh, we found out back in April about uh, the award. The Frostburg Stormwater Pond was fully funded at just over $560,000, and our uh, Evitz Creek sewer realignment and stream restoration was not funded uh, for this year, primarily because the funding was targeted for urban areas, and that was kind of outside the the areas I guess they were trying to focus in at this time. Um, the Frostburg Stormwater Pond project uh, has been previously designed and will be administered uh, through the local soil conservation district. Uh, they completed phase one, a piping system in the west end of Frostburg a few years ago and this uh, project we're going to be hopefully moving forward with is phase two. It'll construct a two acre stormwater pond and treat about 100 acres of runoff from the city of Frostburg. Uh, the reason that's important It'll provide capture and detention uh, for stormwater that's been diverted as a result of the city's ongoing uh, combined sewer separation projects that have been going on for about 10 years now. So uh, that water that is now just running untreated into Sand Spring Run will now be treated and uh, that's kind of the whole goal of that, that program in addition to separating it from the sanitary sewer. Um, this project's ready to go, it's ready to be advertised for bids and we're hoping we can begin construction this fall. We don't have any local match required other than any uh, staff time uh, from our office or from soil conservation to for construction management inspection or uh, processing payment requests. Um, City of Frostburg said they're very appreciative of our efforts and soil conservation's efforts to uh, keep this project moving forward. I'm pleased that it helps them uh, complement their investments and their efforts in their CSO program. Um, I'd like to thank Craig Hartsock, Adam Havner with Soil Conservation for helping us out with this project. They completed the design and are kind of taking charge of it, which is uh, very helpful to keep that cooperation going. Uh, and to sum up, uh, we're seeking approval to have President McKay sign the grant agreement so we can begin advertisement and move forward with this project. Okay. Commissioners, are there any comments or concerns for Mr. DeWitt? None. None. No, no, I like these projects. I've I know did you did several of them and they're they're very worthwhile, so I can't wait. All right. Well then I'll entertain a motion that we accept item number five, the Department of Natural Resources Capital Improvement Grant request for proposal for the Frostburg Stormwater Retrofit Grant Agreement Execution. Is there a said motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been proudly uh, made by Commissioner Brody and seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. That passed legal? Sure. You my slur in the Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's okay. We know what you've you mean. gotten used to that. You yeah, you've gotten used to that, haven't you? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mr. DeVore. My brother from another mother. <laughs> it's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, we are good looking. That's right. That eye oh candy is God. going to steal right. the show tonight. That's so. right. There's two pieces of eye candy in this room tonight. <laughs> I make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to break out and sing, Oh Lord, it's so hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. So true. You can't seem to look in the mirror because you get better looking each day. <laughs> um, I'm sure you just made Mac Davis proud. <laughs> <laughs> to know me is to love me. It must be a hell of a sin. Richard, we're going to Mr. DeVore. Please, please proceed. Uh, what you have before you tonight is consideration for property acquisition. Uh, in 2011, we began the process of looking for a site to be able to construct a federally funded uh, communications tower for the Mount Savage area. Um, through much help with Dan Williams, who happens to be here tonight, we were able to reach an arrangement with uh, David and Su Suzette Bond on Bald Knob in Mount Savage to locate a communications tower on that site. And ultimately, the goal was to be able to uh, bring a cell phone vendor in and then the property owner would uh, receive the benefits from that co-location. To date, we've been unsuccessful in getting a vendor to co-locate, and the property owner has given us an opportunity to purchase the, the site outright. Uh, so what's before you tonight is a request for approval for the acquisition of the property on Bald Knob Road for $75,000. Okay. Commissioners, is there any questions or thoughts for Mr. DeVore? This includes a good right-of-way and... Absolutely. It's all deed to easement. And we'll continue to look for a cell phone carrier. And, uh, Absolutely, and we're speaking with the folks here tonight from Mount Savage. Uh, uh, certainly, we're very appreciative of Mr. Bond providing us an opportunity to get public safety communications into Mount Savage. Right. But we're equally committed to being able to bring cell phone communications into the town of Mount Savage as well. Yeah, very good. That and, and Old Town, we've got two, two real bad mm. spots, and one of these days um, we're going to have a problem. So we need to... Oh double our efforts with that. Anyhow, that being the case, Richard, uh, our commissioners, if I may, I'd like to uh, make a motion for the Bald, Bald Knob Road property per purchase. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Well, you're item number seven, too, huh? Yes, sir. What you have before you tonight on item number seven, commissioners, is the acceptance of the emergency management performance grant for fiscal year 2014. Uh, this is an $83,000 grant, and over the last few years we've seen this grant uh, actually tick up, which is um, uh, an unusual trend for us in the public safety side. Uh, this grant does come with a 50% match, however, that 50% match is made annually through the operating budget of the Emergency Management Division of the Department of Emergency Services. Okay. Any comments from Mr. DeVore? Questions? None? Commissioners? I move that we accept the federal fiscal year 2014-2015 emergency management grant. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, what is on our consent agenda this evening, Mr. Everly? Commissioners, our consent agenda this afternoon consists of items 8 through 13. Items number 8 and 9 relate to board appointments to both the Ag Land Preservation Board and to the Animal Control Board. Item 10 deals with our executing a service agreement with HRDC in support of the Rental Housing Allowance Program and authorizing the President to execute the grant agreement for FY 2015. Item 11 is the County's Annual Property, annual, uh, property and Casualty Insurance Renewal. Item 12 is our Annual Abatement of Real Estate Taxes for Property Owned by the Allegheny Building Trades Education Foundation. And the last item, uh, we're asking for authorization to seek proposals for design professionals to support phase one of the South Cumberland Library renovation project. Okay. Uh, commissioners, please note that item number eight and item number nine, um, uh, all those ap appointments um, were all vetted. Um, I did all those interviews um, for uh, the Times News and the radio. We had seven people that were interested in the Animal Control Board. Uh, we did seven interviews. Um, if you remember at one of our other meetings, we had one of the members come in and ask for us to open that up to the public, and we did interview every person who did submit uh, 
a resume. So, all right, commissioners, I'd like to entertain a motion that we accept our consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. What is on your desk, Mr. Everly? Nothing this evening, Commissioner. What? Nothing. You're not yielding the balance of your time to the debonair and dashing, I, I, I Mr. Rudd? That. Thank you for the reminder. I'll do that. Okay. Mr. Rudd, anything on your desk? Nothing. Now, this is a good opportunity. You know. I know. Yeah. We have a full house. Okay, okay, sir. All right. Commissioners, statements, comments? Mr. Brody. Okay, I will be very brief tonight. First of all, I want to thank everyone that came out and supported the fair last week at Allegheny County, but more especially, uh, I'd like to thank the staff. That is a world in, a, in itself out there, and the amount of work them guys put into it is astronomical. So uh, a heartfelt thank you to them. It was a, a great show. Another thing, uh, there was one question that was asked of me last week quite a bit, because I know all three of us was out there almost 100 hours, was, and it's nothing to do with us, but I hope we can get Mr. Everly to find out an answer to what is going on with Love's truck stop, sir. If we have anyone that we can rattle their cage and find out what's going on, because everyone I've seen out there last week had that question. Okay. So uh, with that being said, sir, that's all I got for this evening. Well, Commissioner, I thought you were going to bring up with the fair that there was a contest. I lost. And there was a contest not to see who would lose the most weight at the fair, eating all the good fair food, but who would actually gain the most weight. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I did a little bit of a bait and switch with Commissioner Brody. I told him that I was coming down for the weigh-in. And I didn't show up in the morning. And he no-showed me. And so, but uh, Commissioner Brody did weigh in. I did. Um, and the rest of the crew out at the fair did weigh in. And uh, there was a winner. However, as Kevin Kalmoff has uh, explained to me, some of the unbelievable things that have ever come out of wagers, of um, uh, how the uh, Jets ended up beating the Baltimore Colts, um, how I can sit in this seat and don't break it. Or, I, I didn't see this in the paper. I mean, it wasn't was in the paper, it? but I'm sure it will be. There's no doubt about it. But at the end of the day, there was about seven people that uh, were in this contest to, to gain the most fair food weight. And if you've ever seen any of the guys who are out at the fair who help out, they are for the most part some real strapping, guys. Um, not, not as tall and as big as Mike Wade in the back there, but very similar. So it was going to be a tough, tough competition. But if anybody has ever met or saw firefighter Sam Wilson, he is a little guy, a skinny guy. However, he was named the grand champion of the weight game for the 2014 Allegheny County Fair. All those big guys actually either stayed the same weight or lost weight, and Sam actually gained one pound. And so it's one of those upsets that would never, you know, I didn't get in there because Mr. DeVore and I, anyhow, we're proud of these these buildings that have been built by he and I, by hand, or actually two hands, depending on the fries. But anyhow, um, that being the case, if you see <laughs> Sam Wilson, he did win, and that's a, he's a grand champion, and uh, they actually have one of those purple grand champion banners with a rope on it that says how much weight, and they said next year they're going to put him in a pen and put it around his neck and parade him around. But anyhow, so... Commissioner Valentine. Well, first I must say that uh, I can't believe that Commissioner Brody didn't win it because out of the 100 hours we were out there, Creed did eat about 95 hours. He, he did more for the I Texas tried. burger stand than anybody else that went to that fair. Uh, I thought I had it in a bag, honestly, Bill. Well, you had it in a bag, and then you take it out of the bag, and you eat it. That's why I thought that you would win. Uh, for myself, uh, I, I traveled to Annapolis yesterday for our MACO meeting, first MACO legislative meeting of the year. 
Uh, we listened to a presentation by Senate President, and uh, same old story as he, he was pushing the idea that um, all the counties should raise taxes. Uh, it doesn't feel that the state should be supporting the counties. The counties have to raise the taxes on our own citizens. And he will once again be pushing an idea that uh, the counties will be allowed to put as much as five cents a gallon uh, tax on gasoline. And yet the way the legislation be written, if we would choose not to do that, that at the end of three years, the state would put it on their force. That's our idea of how they would replace the uh, highway user funds that they have so conveniently removed from the counties. Um, needless to say, this didn't receive a real strong reception from the members of MACO. Uh, it was good to hear him put it out there because it gives us plenty of time to start, uh, start figuring out how we shall resist the, this idea that he came up with. Of course, we'll have Commissioner McKay down there to fight for us this year. You yeah. will keep us informed as this moves forward, yes. Bill. Yeah, so. please, Bill. Thank you very much for your commitment to MACO, sir. Okay, we're going to move right into constituents and in order of signing up. Uh, we have Mr. Robert Dining. Uh, did I pronounce that right? Uh, where we looked. Yes. Okay. Welcome, sir. If you'd give your name and address for the record, sir. Uh, my name's Robert Denning. I Denning. live at 16502 Dutch Hall Road in the village of Mount Savage. Today, Commissioner McKay, Valentine, and Brody, I'd like to bring the subject up of Frostburg Water in, in Dutch Hall. Residents of Dutch Hall have existed for over 20, 125 years on our own without any need for outside water. The residents do not need or want the Frostburg water. At this time, only three residents want the water and they live on Cowa Hill and Blank Road. Those three houses can be supplied water by an alternative route by entering and staying on Cowa Hill and entering Blank Road across the bridge and into the residents of Patrick King that wants the water. That's an alternative that leaves out Dutch Hall. We were canvassed by Inspector Melvin Van Meter and he said there were monies left over to extend the water up into Dutch Hall. If there's money left over, this can be more efficiently used by extending it through Newtown, Burrellsville, and Sunnyside. There's now currently five houses in that area that are pumping water out of Jennings Run into their wells, which are dry. We don't have dry wells in Mount Savage in Dutch Hall. There are no other residents, there are some other residents of the, that area that are also low on water. This money can be used but more efficiently to help them instead of bringing it to Dutch Hall. Dutch Hall does not need the Frostburg water system now or in the future. Dutch Hall has never been a part of the Mount Savage water system. We are independent of it. We all have our own wells. Again, if the three houses need the water, use the alternative route of Calla Hill to Blank Road. If you decide to use the money there instead of where it is really needed in Lower Newtown, Burlesville, and sunny side. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Okay, Mr. Rick, is it Emnick? Emmerich. Emmerich, yes, sir. My name is uh, Richard Emmerich. I live in uh, 16510 Dutch Hollow Road in Mount Savage. I'm against the water uh, being brought into Dutch Hollow also. I've lived there for 36 years. I have the some of the best water in the town. I had Colic and Water Company came and checked my water and they told me there's nothing they can do for my water, my water's fine. Uh, we've never been without water. And if you're going to make us force us to take the city water of Frostburg, um, 
I, I do not want it. I'm against it altogether. Uh, we don't want the water and we don't need the water. There's other people up that area that needs that water. Give it to them. Thank okay. you. Could I ask what? Yes. Were any of you notified that the county was planning to do this? Yes. By um, the county? No, we were notified by the um, inspector. Because it, it's not even on our radar screen. Yes. Yeah. The I inspector said they had extra money and they wanted to run it up that hall. Well, there's a, the USDA will have a, a huge say in if there's any cost over or underruns on how that money is to be spent. And so we would have to do a preliminary engineering report and an environmental assessment, and that's something that we have not undertaken at this point in time, but we will do in the near future. Uh, but there are other options for us to, uh, as you've already mentioned, both of you have mentioned about how we could apply a feeder line down towards Barrowville. So uh, there are a lot of a lot of moving parts here, and uh, no decisions have been made by the county until we consult with USDA. Okay, we we've had a flood here years ago, and probably uh, seven or eight different people drilled new wells, and they have brand new wells. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know why we okay. need water up through there. <laughs> okay, well. Okay, thank you for your time. Duly yeah. noted. Yes, sir. There again, it's it's not necessarily on on the radar, but duly noted, and we'll take that into consideration. Thank you for coming. Okay, Mr. Leroy Myers. <clears throat> Oh, only if Mr. Taylor agrees. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioners, for the record, my name is Edward W. Taylor, Jr., 400 South Allegheny Street, Cumberland, Maryland. And this evening I am here as president of the Cumberland Historic Cemetery Organization. I'm here with some of our members. Uh, Reverend Pastor Dees of Metropolitan AME Church here in Cumberland, Maryland, and Maryland Delegate Leroy Myers. Uh, back in the winter, this past winter, uh, we requested uh, $5 of the marriage license fee be given permanently to the Cumberland Historic Cemetery Organization. And that was on track to a degree, as we all are aware, and uh, the media more or less started a controversy out of something that wasn't a controversy and the issue kind of just fell on deaf ears. We are still pursuing it, we're still going to pursue it, and uh, we are asking at this meeting for the commissioners uh, to award us $5 out of every marriage license fee. Now, not out of the $35 that every couple pays for. Um, let me explain myself. If a couple pays their marriage license and they go to a clergyman, they do not have to pay the an additional $25 that the clerk charges to marry. If you want to get married at the courthouse, you pay your $35 fee, and then there's an additional $25 that stays right here in Allegheny County. That money never really leaves the county. Out of that money, uh, the Allegheny County Historical Society, since back in the late 60s, have been receiving some of that money. And they are incorporated exactly the way we are, as a nonprofit historical institution. The Cumberland Historic Cemetery Organization has been in this community for 31 years. We have restored thousands of grave sites. We have erected over 800 monuments, uh, millions of dollars worth of monuments. We maintain 11 cemeteries in the area, and uh, we do a whole host of historical programs. The one we just did for July was July 4th to honor the uh, great men of the American Revolution, our America's patriots, and we have programs throughout the entire year. As running this organization for several decades, I have watched a whole host of historical organizations and social groups receive huge sums of money. Uh, we asked for a small portion of the hotel motel tax from the county. We originally asked for 14,000. Uh, when we saw in the paper that the uh, tax revenue, property tax revenue was down, we resubmitted what we asked for and we lowered it down to 3,000. I don't think any organization has ever done that. And we were denied. However, the Allegheny County Arts Council, who asked for 35,000, got their 35,000. And uh, what we are trying to do is ask for a very small portion of money that is out there. There is no reason why it can't be given to the group on a permanent basis. It will be used in Allegheny County cemeteries. One thing we are working on now is building information monuments, putting a paragraph or two of the deceased on a flat marker on their grave 
uh, people who have been dead for 150, 200 years, and that monument will be there when everyone in this room is dead and gone, and that's kind of a, a tourism type thing to promote history when we're all dead and gone and can't give a cemetery tour, so to speak. That monument will do the job for us. So it's not just what we can do now with that money, it's what we will be doing, and that money will continue to serve well into future generations. And I'll yield the rest of my time to my other fellow colleagues. Thank you. Certainly. Delegate Leroy Myers. For the record, I'm Delegate Leroy Myers, 11748 Ashton Road in Clear Spring. Um, good evening, Commissioners, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to address you. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm here this evening on behalf of the Cumberland Cemetery Organization, and I've come to know them quite well over my 12 years serving in Allegheny County and uh, become very good friends with Ed Taylor. Uh, I know that uh, Ed has at some times ruffled feathers in Allegheny County, probably that's uh, putting it mildly, but uh, Ed is very sincere and Ed's shown me that um, uh, this group, this organization, does a great service to Allegheny County. Um, the his history, uh, probably something that I learned to know in my 12 years of serving in Allegheny County, uh, is the vast history we have going back uh, for the Queen City and the industry and, and, uh, and the like. But uh, if you look at our, what is there dating back beyond the Civil War here in Allegheny County, here in Cumberland, and what this organization does to, to maintain, uh, why? Because they are an organization that does it because they want to. They don't, they don't get paid, but what they've done, they've taken their hard-earned money and some small donations, and they bought the gas, they've got their own mowers, and they go out and they, they maintain, they erect, they sometimes have to stabilize and such, you know, the, uh, the cemeteries. Why? For the history. Not as much for the families, but for the history, that's, that's the treasures that are here. So this evening, I'm uh, here to support Mr. Taylor's request. Uh, the method that he's uh, requesting, I think you well know, is appropriate, because uh, of the Code County regulations that uh, you all have. And um, this, along with the fact that I did learn from the mayor and council, they're going to try to carve out some uh, hotel motel tax. They feel they can do that because of the number of people that stop by City Hall, and uh, mostly, believe it or not, are Mormons. And they want to check out the genealogy. They're very big on genealogy. And there's a lot of them come through and use our hotels and, and restaurants <coughs> and services and buy gas to go back home as they come to Allegheny County. So uh, I trust you'll find a way to honor his request. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Reverend Albert, <coughs> Alfred Dees. Good evening, Pastor. It's a pleasure to be here, gentlemen. I'm here, I'm Pastor Alfred Dees, Met <coughs> the Metropolitan AME Church here in Cumberland, Maryland. I live at 709 Frederick Street in Cumberland. And I'm here tonight to support the request by the cemetery organization of receiving that five dollars from the marriage license fee of each couple married by the clerk. Why would I want to support them? Because since I've been here in 2001, I have found that the founder of the organization, Brother Mr. Ed Taylor, and this organization has done a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, benefit, benefit, tremendous benefit to the African American community here. The Sumner uh, Cemetery site would still be underground right now, covered by branches and, and, and dirt and grass, and uh, the sites particularly for the uh, Union soldiers, the colored soldiers, that were and have been um, memorialized by this organization would not be present and available for people to go and visit and to see. But this organization, utilizing their own efforts, uh, even when we have memorial services on Memorial Day, uh, they bring the bugler, they bring the cannoneer, they bring the reef, they bring the program. All we do is bring the people to come and, ex and experience that which they, as an organization, set up on a Memorial Day to honor our, our uh, veterans. And so I am very, very supportive of them receiving, finally, some support, just a small amount of support, so that they can continue to do what they do valuably for this community. And so I stand in support of their request. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Um, Mr. Taylor had brought up about the budget. Um, 
just remind everyone that we did pass that budget um, here a couple weeks ago. And uh, am I correct, Dave, that there was no new money that was uh, uh, in that budget? Um, you want to speak maybe on that? If you don't mind, Commissioners, um, uh, during the um, FY 2015 budget development process, it wasn't easy. Uh, we, um, as we explained uh, this year, we, um, we experienced a, a very sizable drop in uh, income tax revenue from the state as part of the county's piggyback tax program. But uh, there were, in addition to the Cumberland Historic Cemetery, four other organizations that were new to the county's budget request process that we, um, that we received information from that uh, we as a staff could not recommend an appropriation this year for. Um, ju just for the record, uh, those organizations were the Mountain Maryland Trails, uh, the Court Appointed Special Advocates Organization, or CASA, Jane's Place, Resources for Independence um, was the fourth one. So um, uh, all, all, all great organizations, uh, all good folks, but um, you know, given our limited funding, um, I didn't feel it was fair to um, all those new, um, new folks that were coming in to pick and choose from them and, and those folks that we already had a, uh, a funding relationship with to, uh, to cut them uh, in, in lieu of any new requests, so. Well, and then also associated charities as well. They had had a, they did not make a formal request, but they had contacted me and anyhow, been a tough, tough issue when it came to the budget. Um, second of all, Mr. Taylor, you and I have talked about uh, heritage grant money and um, helping you out with that and applying that. So that that's an, an option as well. So um, what we'll do is uh, we'll refer this to staff for recommendation and um, try to figure out from a legal standpoint if there's something we could do and then we'll get back with you. So, okay. All right. Mr. Wade. Got an you, important, you got an important event coming up here there, right. don't you? You guys know this is an election year. Don't get nervous. I'm not <laughs> interested. I'm not Are interested. You an, <laughs> hey guys, he's announcing his write-in candidacy. <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. Recently, I was elected to the position as the Mountain District Commander for the American Legion. I represent all the American Legions within Allegheny and Garrett County. My first assignment by the Department of Maryland American Legion was to establish a town hall meeting. This town hall meeting is for veterans to assemble and share their experiences, both good and bad, about the Maryland Veterans Affairs healthcare system and facilities. This includes their handling of administrative services to eligible veterans and the amount of wait time experienced to receive a doctor's appointment. This event will be videotaped and covered by local media outlets. Veterans representatives will not be present. The video will be sent to the American Legion National Headquarters, who will in turn disseminate this information to the VA. On behalf of the American Legion, we hope you will help us get the word out to all the veterans in Allegheny County. You are invited to come and listen to what veterans have to say. The meeting will take place at Allegheny College Theater on Monday, August the 4th, between the hours of 6 and 9 p.m. Thank you for your attention. Oh, and I have flyers, if anybody in the audience wants to get the time, date, and place, we have that available. Certainly. Thank you, guys. And as I shared with you today, Mike, um, the Maryland Rural Counties Coalition at our meeting at MACO here in August um, is going to have a report from Carroll County oh, right. who has um, really taken up the, the plight for the veterans. And um, the Rural Counties Coalition may or may not um, take that up as a, as an, as a, um, as a, uh, a, a positive thing down in uh, Annapolis this year. But um, I'll report back to you uh, when we find that out. I can give you a heads up too. The American Legion for Maryland has started a get out the vote campaign to try to improve voter registration and, and, and encourage Americans to do their one and only sacred duty other than pay taxes. 
And that is the vote. Thank you. <laughs> I'd say Mr. Bennett appreciates that, but that he doesn't even appreciate it. I mean, even, even. Okay. All right, I'd like to remind everyone that our next public business meeting will be Thursday, August the 7th. 2014, five o'clock right here in room 100. County commissioners would like to thank you for participating in your government and we hope you have a nice evening. Thank you.